That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But in my vision, the first vision is something very powerful that I read. And when this son came on earth, what happened to him who still stay in the Isaiah chapter 53? We we'll read from verse 4 to 5. Can we read it? carry our sorrows, yet we did esteem him striking, smiting of God in afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for mm. our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The, chastis the, chast the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his scraps we are healed. Hallelujah. This was the life that we have. All that have been mentioned here. Thank God I wrote the things in French before. Otherwise it would have been very difficult for me. Hallelujah. All that we read here, that was our condition. When God loved the word and the word and he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. That's what happened to him. And that happened to him was the, 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 the consequence of our life that we were living as men. Hallelujah. But Jesus bear everything. They just that, that word I, I would like to understand it. He said that the chastisement that brought us peace upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. Hallelujah. After we have received all this, Jesus has paid a great price for us. When we go through the Bible, we we'll see that Jesus has done all. He has done a lot. But the problem is that we are ungrateful. That's why we disobey him. We did not wait that the price that the Lord paid for us on the cross. That's why we are living as if nothing has been done. That's ungratefulness. I remember in Matthew chapter 26, verse 30, when Jesus went on the mount of... Oh, 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 let's, let's go there, let's go there. When Jesus went there at that mountain with his, his disciples, the Bible said that he was... He, the sorrow killed him. He was sorrowful. And he has said that the Lord who came to die for us, the Bible said that he went before the Father and he prayed. He said, Lord, if it's possible, take that cup away from me. And the Bible said that he prayed that prayer. Take that. He lived to 33 years and half without sinning. But see what happened to him. A price has been paid for us. He has been slain for us. When you read Isaiah 53 from verse 1, you can see that nobody could have appreciated how Jesus was looking like. The Lord says he has nothing to please us when we take a look at him. Hallelujah. Amen. If we value the price that has been paid for us, see, when you did something for someone and the person did not turn back to say thank you, how do you feel? How do you feel? But Jesus has paid a price for all our sins. See, before 
God stopped speaking to the word. When the people of Israel sinned against the Lord, something happened to them. Isn't it? Am I talking to you? Yeah. Let's be a response when there's a patient. Now we are all claiming the grace. We are no more under the law, but we are under the grace. But what are we doing with that grace? Are we grateful to the grace that has been given to us? You don't need to wash your hand, wash your feet, go and buy a cow to go and sacrifice just by believing your sin has been forgiven. But what are you doing with that? You pay the price. How are we living towards the price that has been paid? The sacrifice that we couldn't pay. That's why today you can hear some men when you are preaching the true word of God and help them. I mean, we can have please touch him. God bless you. When you are preaching, they say you don't know what you are talking about. We are under the grace. Nobody can be saved by his words. It's only by grace to faith. Yes. Yes. But what are you doing with that? Grace and faith. Yes, we are saved by grace through faith. But how do you live towards the grace and the faith? Ungratefulness. Because we don't know the price that has been paid for us. That's why. When you know the truth, you live as true. Thank God when Pastor Evans was here, he said something that is very powerful. He said, what we preach to you is not a mind of man, it's not a, a, a matter of what is of God. That's the truth. It's just the truth and it's the word of God. Now that you know the truth, what do you do with the truth? You know, today people can say, I'm living my life. You don't know what you are saying. You don't know. This life you are calling my life is not yours. Nothing belongs to you. Nothing. You don't know what you are talking about. Let me live in my life. Ungratefulness take us to disobedience because if we are grateful of what has been done for us or what has been given to us, we will obey. God is not only a God that gives, He's also a God that receives and takes. After you pray, pray, receiving, receiving, what are you giving to God? Day after day, we are in our rooms of praying, oh Lord, give me, oh Lord, give me. Have you ever given something to God? As you are sitting here, Maybe you are following my Facebook. Check your life. What are you giving to God? Or what are you giving to God? Check it. Are you giving a part and keeping another part for you? Or you give all? When it comes to giving today, in churches that turn to something else. But the giving I'm going to talk about is not your money, but it's your life.
But you know, you don't value the price or the weight of the price that has been paid for you. That's why you're ungrateful. And being ungrateful any way, you will disobey. I'll show you. The Bible is very rich and deep. Jesus has done something great. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13, 13 to 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. You are there, take your microphone and read chapter two. 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 Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to 14 reads, And you being dead in your sins, in the seconds, in the seconds, and you being dead in your sin, in the circumcision of your faith, of your flesh are quaking together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. You see that? When we were sinners, we were dead, says the Bible. But God has bring us back to life and with him, Lord Jesus, how? By forgiving us all our trespasses. You see what Jesus has done? When you were a sinner, when you were not a born again, this is what happened to you. You were dead, condemned into death. But he has bringing you back to death with him by forgiving you all your iniquities. Verse 14. Verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances, ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, Hallelujah. building it to the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me read here also. Verse 14. By canceling the recall of death that stood against us with a legal demands, this is set aside, kneeling it to the cross. Can somebody understand it? Can you understand this, this verse? There was a record against you. When we see you in the spiritual realm, it was written on you, content. By the life of sinning that you were living, that anyone under the sun which not born again, that's his condition. But for who who are born again, who know the Lord Jesus Christ, this is what he has done for us. He, he, he cancelled it. He cancelled it. And it has a legal demand. That means that wherever you go, you will find guilty indeed. But Jesus cancelled it and he nailed it on the cross. Verse 15. Verse 15. And having spoken principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, transforming, transferring over them in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you understand that? The action of Jesus does not stop on the physical thing, but he entered the spiritual realm. That's why Apostle Paul, after that, was preaching and said, We does not restore against flesh and blood. There were some spirits, some entities who were standing against us, but the work of the cross have disarmed them. 
You see what Jesus has given to us? Is it not enough? Is it not enough? But we were the same. We went back to those principalities. We went back to those rulers by our way of living. What please God that we know we don't want to do it. That the proof that we are up, we are once again calling over these rulers, those principalities, those spirits in the spiritual realm, the realm of the darkness. Hallelujah. Jesus has done a lot. We are not going to the one where men misbehave. You see, all that the Lord has done, He deserves that we obey to Him. That the obedience will come first by our gratefulness. When you acknowledge what has been done for you, surely, surely, you will become obedient. And I was blessing God when Pastor Evans was leading the prayer because he touched everything that I've not. When he comes to tell me, Pastor, you'll be preaching tomorrow. You don't have light <laughs> since yesterday. LEC. I said, okay. And I entered my room. I started praying, meditating on the service. Earlier this morning, when I woke up, we're about to come. I said, Pastor, I have to go through my Bible because I don't know what to say. I have to pray. And the Lord gave me something for the people. And I took my pen and started writing them. And all the prayer was about what I wrote here. We are now going to the point. First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. Mais je sens pisser sur toi. Pour ma force ne peut, Seigneur, toi tu peux. This song I've been singing since me. I need you, Lord. I'm powerless and strengthless without you. My eyes are on you. If you are there, you can Everything that a man do well is out of the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. Wait. Fornication. That's the sexual immorality. When you are not married, when there's no diary, whether you are a young lady or an old lady where there's no diary on you and you are in the room of a man that's fornication you are sinning against your own body and fornication does not stop or end on the sexual intercourt alone the things around also take part you come to understand something Go on, please. Verse 19. Mm. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not of your own? Hallelujah. Oh, do you know? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. 
That's why I was saying that some would stand and say, it's my life. I'm doing what you don't know what you are saying. Whether you are born again or not, once that the price has been paid for the sin of the whole world and the spirit of God has been released on the day of Pentecost, no man under the sun has the right to use his body as he wants. It's not a part of singing Pentecost. Pentecost, the Spirit of God has come. No, since a price has been paid on Calvary, and Jesus died and has been buried and resurrected, come back to life the third day, and have been taken by in heaven. And after the coming of the Holy Spirit, nobody has the right to play with his body. All of us, whether you are believer or not. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you knew the price that have been paid for you, you would have allowed the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in you. That's some carefulness. That's all. The body you have, is it just for you to go and masturbate with it? The body you have, is it just for you to go and expose your private parts? Who told you that is yours? Who told you? Your mother will carry you in her body for nine months. You belong not to her. Let me tell you. You belong to God. You know the secret of it. You know why every man is dying. For God about because of the sin in the garden of Eden, the Adamic nature. Do you know why? God created man to live an everlasting life on earth. Now that the sin has entered in our life, you know what? We have to go back to our maker. That's why, and we'll go through them. If your life is yours, why are you dying? Why are you can go sick? If your body belongs to you, why don't you don't you have the ability to protect your body to have sickness or disease? And the meal here is on the verse 20 to verse 20. Verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Hallelujah. Are you glorifying God in your body and your spirit, we are God? If right now, the Lord Jesus appear here and started ask, asking each of us how do we deal with our body that is the temple of the Holy Spirit are we glorifying God in our body that belong to him the body that the Lord gave to us as a gift for our spirit and soul to dwell in are we using it to sin against him again? How do we handle that have been given to us? And when it comes to the body, I'm not talking about that. Only the makeups and the tattoo that you can do with your body. But how do you live? Because if you knew that you have been bought with a high price, you have been careful with your life. See the last word said, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. So glorify God in your body. That is another command. Are we obeying it? God of glory 
Raja Burak Luhi Mamari of the Evans. Mama Angie, God of Glory, Joyce Jessica, Titi, Linda, everybody. This is the question we must ask ourselves. How do we glorify God in our body? Maybe Brother Honore will help me if I'm lost of words so that I can go into French for him to translate it in English for you. How do we glorify God in our body? Yet the heart of the Lord is sad. constant in the evangelizing? Are we constant in holiness? How do we glorify God in our body that belongs to Him? Maybe you hear, you have heard a lot of preachers preaching to you. Yes. We are not here on our own. What we preach to you, that's the word of God. You know, Pastor, there are certain people in churches they don't know that they are sitting against God for them to just be being just a member in the church is dangerous for yourself. I may say something worse this night. Let me tell you, there is a sin in it. Be just a member. Be just a member. There's nothing that you can do for God. There's nothing that you can do for God. For you to just be a member in that body that belongs not to you. How do you glorify God? What we are doing, we are just doing our own. Let me tell you the truth. We are not waiting for some appreciation. Again, we are doing well. We have been sent here to do well. Isn't it, Pastor? We have been sent here to preach the word of God in truth. So if we are doing it, your all, oh, your people are doing good, does not do anything for us. Or to us. Do you know why? We are just fulfilling our duty. Let me ask you a question. When you are hungry and you went to cook and eat, do you need an anaro for that? To you have done what is necessary for you? That's our part. What you hear, what are you doing with it? Still, they are coming here, they are arranging the chairs for you. Still, you start the prayer, they are waiting for you. Still, what do you do? You know, glorifying God, when people are looking for highest, highest things, that's the simple thing. I've been shocked today when we went for a round when we came. 15 minutes to 5.30. And again, the brother was arranging it. And I shout, I said, brother, we have 15 minutes to start. Why the things are not arranged? We were praying in our car that we should be here on time because we have to start at 5.30. 
But the same time we arrive, we just pack the car. Yes, Malaria, she's coming. The service is at 5 days. What about you? Pastor, most of the time when you are reading the Bible, we forgot to bring it to ourselves. These are people Jesus called, say, come. And one say, I bought the land, let me go and do something. Another say, let me go and bury, bury my my. They have excuses. When it comes to God, no excuses can stand. When will we start obeying to God? You will think, think about your life, how you live your life. God has sent men to you. How do you live with them? That's the time that you have to decide yourself. Make the decision to please the world. How? By involving yourself in everything. mercy of the Lord will locate you. Let me tell you, the God we are worshipping is not a wicked God. Even though you are doing wrong, nothing will happen to you. Let me tell you. Is there a business you are doing, it will prosper. Is there anything you are looking for, you will have it. But you know what? The everlasting life, you are not part of it. That's the truth. Sometimes people pray that, some preachers also, when they are trying For instance, we come to preach here and some worldly people put a lot of speakers disturbing us. We can't hear what we are preaching. I can't pray for their speaker to spoil. No. And it won't spoil even though I pray. The thing will work well and I'll be disturbed. But if they don't repent and come to Christ, when they will die, they will go to hell. One day I was preaching to a taxi driver in my country. I preached to him. He said he's a Muslim. I said, yes, my man. That's good. But let me tell you the truth. If you die as a Muslim, you go to hell. I'm sorry. You should have prayed so that I shouldn't meet you today. You know it already. He was saying a certain thing. I said, man, you are wrong. He said, if, if I'm wrong, let not my, 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 my car spark. I said, you think that I'm worshipping an idol? The thing God knows that you are using to eat, you want God to spoil it. Which God am I preaching? No, your car will not spoil. It will work. Even today, you will make money. But you know what? If you don't repent, you go to hell. The fact that things are working for you doesn't mean that you are the approval of God. Most of the time, when they are wrong and things are going well for them, as for them, God is with them. No. God is our father. Even in our houses, as mother of us, when our children did something against us and we get annoyed, we say, you will not eat today. Anyway, there is food for him. Am I lying? There is food for him. Because your son has done something, you will not bath. Because your son has done something that you suck him out of the house, even though are doing it, they are out of their, their brain is no more there. How much more God? Please. They are what I call silent guests. This guest doesn't speak at all. There's no scent. You can't see it. But Unfortunately, it's at the head of the day you see that one it will be late. You can't, there can't be a reverse. That's why we must live our life according to the rule of the Lord. He said that our body is a temple of Christ. How do we handle this temple? God 
has blessed us. How do we handle the blessing of God? You have a gift. God has granted you a gift. You are there as a born again, as you call yourself, and your gift is not is is useless in the house of God. Those who know how to usher, you have to beg them to usher. Those who know how to sing, you have to beg them to sing. I don't know which reward are you waiting for in heaven. There's nothing for you. One question about heaven. Uh, there are some ceremony of our work. Maybe some happen here in Liberia, isn't it? When you don't have an award, can you find yourself on the stage? You just go there because you have money, you want to see those who have award. That's worldly. But on the stage where people are giving award, there's no place for you there. Nobody invites you there. You just attend there yourself. So, in heaven, if you don't have a reward there, are you sure that you will enter? We are going to heaven to be rewarded. There's no reward for you there. What are you going to do then? Because for you just to have this part in heaven is a reward. You don't have it. What are you going to do there? And what will bring the reward is the work of God. What is the work of God? Living a holy life. Preaching the, the good news of the gospel to others. Not only preaching, but your life must be the message also. Making all your effort to please the Lord. That's the work of God. Prompt obedience. Total obedience. We know that you are not serving God. And in need of the word of God, as we can come and preach to you, unfortunately, Pastor, during the week, since next Thursday, nobody here called to check how we are doing. How is things going? And the thing that amazed me is sometimes when you are around, people are giving us names. When I went to Jamaica, I told them we are not the people. The people are come all the people. We are not the people. Stop that. We are pastors. Just respect that call of us. You should learn to say the pastors are around. Instead of saying the people are here. You're not the people. Are you your people or are you your pastors? Are we your people or are we your pastors? Ask them me. Oh, if what I'm saying is wrong, you tell me. Is it wrong? Is it normal for you when your men of God are coming to, to say, pe the people are coming. Oh. The people are here. The pe I, this should be no respect. That's also the work of God. Respecting the men of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes nobody knows what we are facing, you know. But when it comes to be here on Thursday, we come here. We are not rich sweet people. Even today I was worried because we have to go around to see some places where to do the service. We couldn't go through the community to invite people. I was wondering my heart. Today we didn't go to the community. Oh. In the week I heard that just Joyce was not fine. I don't have credit in my phone. I took another phone, I called her, uh, she didn't pick. Maybe she was in the class. We were in the class on Monday. Maybe. We went to school on Monday. I try to call you. 
I took someone else's number, telephone to call. When I went to Jamaica on Thursday, the church members they were complaining, Pastor, you, you took our number, you didn't call us. And they were showing some attitude. I said, hey, do you know that 10 LT I don't have it? Do you know it? Among you, who called me? It was only one sister, Sister Alvina, who called Pastor, how are you coming on? This year I had it. How are you coming on? That has me, how are you doing? You it? I said, oh, I'm fine. God bless you. It was even her birthday. I was telling the pastors, hey, you should call her. Hey, we don't have it. Let's call her and say happy birthday. Just we are, we are always thinking about you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the family. And that's the job that we have. And we can get. And this thing gives life to what we are doing. Instead of you being those who give us sorrow, rather be those who give us joy. Because if because of you we are in pain, it is not profitable to you. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that we should glorify God in our body that belongs to God and our spirit also. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to students today. To you tell me you go to Russia. They come here. I see. You went to school today. Come on. Ah, okay. How? Oh, that's an excuse. Do you know that doesn't stand? Because if you were in this before the seat of judgment of God, is that an excuse? Sometimes we must think about the simple things. Let's bring it. If you have the mindset of the kingdom of God of heaven, there are certain things we will not do. There are certain excuses we can't give. Ah, Pastor, I didn't say it to you when I was wondering. I said, if it comes down to we don't be, we lost the car and we are short of money. How can we leave the bar to here? You know what is my mind? We walk on. <laughs> it's the truth. Because we can't tell you that we can't come because we don't have money. Is that not bad? And how come that you are here and we are we, we are short of money? Or pastors. How? At the extent that we can come, there is service you are here. Oh, the pastors are not aware. You call them and say they don't have money. Does it sound well? That's why pastors say, provide to their need. We just disobey. Because we are not grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. Hear me, people of God. There's no any excuse that you want to give when it comes to God. Put yourself, imagine yourself before the throne of judgment of God and ask you if what I'm saying, will I be able to say it? Can this spare me? You know, the school you are going, it won't give you everlasting life. That's the truth. It's not that we don't want you to go to school, but it will not give you anything. What did I call something? Is that will give you life. That's why Jesus said that we should work for a work that are not perishable. Jesus was talking here about the everlasting life. Hallelujah. Me, my story at school. Uh, I started serving the Lord seriously, and my father was not fine with it. At the extent that in my campus, I opened a fellowship, prayer, fasting, 
of all night. Program upon program that you people call revival here. And I was the first one also in any exam of the school. But I was not the first one in my classroom. I was between the third or fourth. I went to write the exam. I, I passed the exam. And I got a mark of 30 to uh, 90 something over 20. I was supposed to be sent to a public school or anywhere to continue my education. But the way I carry the work of God, when they affected all the students, me, my name cannot be found anywhere. So my father said, we told you to learn and to study. You say you are doing church. You finish your concert. Next week, you are going to village. And I entered my room and I started praying. And I said, Lord, I've served you. I pray like him is a is it is it a or is it a? I pray like him. I said, Lord, I've said you. You can't allow me and lead, let me down like that. Do something. Show me where I am. You know what happened? After two months, people were going to school. My name has not been found somewhere. After three days of fasting, because of the program I have, I had a concert. A friend of mine came in my house. This one, I've never shown him my home, the house. When he went there, he said, ah, I saw his name in one of the university. It's not possible. Finish first form, eh? uh, fourth form, and find yourself in the university. It's not possible. They come and say, we saw his name in one university. What is going, going to do there? I'm going to let electronic. Somebody, I'll pretend that I'm useless. You know, my father even tell, said to me that a, 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 a cow, a cow is better than you because of Christ. When he come like that, when I reach home, I become sleep because I was so, I was thinking. I said, ah, I'm fed again. Who would I come and get it? I said, deliverance. You know what happened? Now, this university is very costly. My father has to pay money now. You say, I don't know anything. No. Go and pay. He doesn't have money now to pay. It's, even the pen that we are using is 5,000 safer. One pen. I have myself three. And there's not, how do you call it? Uncle inside to write. You have to buy it also. The books are very uh, ink. ink. There's no ink inside. I must go and buy it again. The things were so, you know, it has become something else. My father was there. Ah, your school, you spend too much, yo. And I, I was there, I said, that's God's punishment. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's me. And I knew that I was in this school for because God wanted to show something to my father. I didn't go there to, gra to graduate. When the time came, I left the school. I stopped school since 2008. Some of you were not born there. But today, if you go to my country, in that school, our teachers are calling us. And my mom, one day, they met me and said, please come back and teach your, your younger brothers because their level is something else. Hallelujah. The level I have now, when it comes to education, I have the level of somebody who have like, if you want, how do you call it? A, a doctorate, a university. Doctorate. C'est qui on est? Mon niveau en français chez moi, c'est la même chose. Doctorate. 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 C'est ça? Doctorate. Alléluia. Mm. You know why it become like that? I keep myself to God. Amen. Amen. There will be a reward for me in heaven. And I'm still trying. I'm even crying. My father, help me. I want to make it. I want to please you. A price that I've been paid, if you don't wait, the value of it, you can't be grateful and obedient to God. This evening, what you must keep in mind, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 
verse 19 and 20 in my version he said or do you not know that your body is a temple of the holy spirit within you whom you have from god you are not your own verse 20 for you were brought you were bought with a price so glorify god in your body hallelujah Any question? Any question? Or somebody have something to say? Yeah, Mama Ari, please can you give her the microphone? Give the microphone to Mama Ari. It's not open. Open it. In Jesus' name. Amen. I bless God for your teaching tonight. Amen. Sincerely, there are times in our life we think we are our own. We forget it totally. Mm -hmm. And then tonight that you have cautioned us to come back to the Bible. Because this is not OC, this is Bible. Mm. And so I bless God to hear that. Amen. That those of us who are sitting here, it's not about you people, it's about our life to make heaven. Mm. And sincerely, if we are sincere, like in a dark closet, you alone, the words you have are many in our life. Because we are not bored with any price in this world. I have not seen the price. Mm. It's a ball, ruby, pearl, diamond, gold. No. It's just a ball, everything. And that is why sometimes I look at myself. Sometimes my children can laugh, say, Mama, why you don't want to dress? I say, I don't see who I want to dress for in this world. There's nobody that I can dress for in this world. But I'm dressing somewhere for somebody. That when I get there, that husband will receive me mm. as a bride of honor. Hallelujah. Who is Jesus? So I want us to remember that nothing is compared to where we are going. Mm. So no dress can be compared. We just lavish our body in sin. Mm. Amen. Amen. Can we clap our hands for that? <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the thing is, it's just ungratefulness. That's all. Jesus made you a woman. You decided to be a man. That one we are on Facebook, I'll keep quiet that in the week I'll be shocked by an information that I received. It deals with this. I did not look at it to prepare this. No. I even forgot it. It was a shock. And I know if she knew that her life was not her own, she would not stand and claim a, 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 a right as an homosexual. We must fight for our rights. Homosexual all over the world in Africa. And I found a sister of mine among them. I was shocked. I was suspecting her because for some years now she's in Europe. I said, This girl, I've never seen a, a guy behind her. You people ask her, What is going in your life? Unfortunately, I, I fell on the life. We should claim our rights. They call it uh, LGBTQ. They don't know. Don't try it. Don't try it. People don't know. God created you, Pastor was seeing me. God created you with black hair. See your hair, is, the color is black. For some it's brown. You see, you say, I don't want it. God, you don't know anything. It must be red. And you turn it into red. How foolish. You are ungrateful. Created me with my hair, you don't know anything. You 
should have pierced it. Let me show you. You don't know. And there you pierce it. Ungratefulness. Since we are saying the people don't believe. For them we are preaching our mind or our doctrine. If God wants you to be, to have a hole in your ear, you should have been pierced before you get born. Ungratefulness. I ask a question, what makes the difference between a baby, between babies? Why we say that a baby is a boy, why we say that a baby is a girl? Why? You have women here? Most of you, you have gave birth. Why? After you, you have a baby. Maybe you can answer me quickly because you have a new baby in your hand. When a baby is born, why do we say it's a boy? Why do we say it's a girl? Give her a microphone, please. Because she has the part of woman. She has the part of woman. Is it because of the whole year? No. Okay. So God has made a mistake to bring a hair in on the hair without the hole in the year. No. So why are we passing it? In gratefulness. You see now? And you will hear some so-called pastors. I like calling them like that. Leave these people that don't know what they are talking about. Wow. Hear me. I was I was one of them preaching that the women should, should, should they, they should make up. Oh, you you must look nice for your God. I was preaching this. And some I preached to die. I know they are in hell. What about me? I'm repent. I'm repent. Or oh, I've repented. That's the good English. I accept it. If I give a microphone to speak French with you, you have to teach me. Amen? Amen. That's the simple truth. And for me to understand that, I was not arguing with the Lord on my bed around four at dawn. But I was praying, I was worrying. I said, Lord, we know women see how they are beautiful, they, they hold their hair, when they the way they they, they pull their hair. This thing, when they wear the trousers, some position, they, these are nice. Why you don't like it? And I was asking such a question, and the Lord took me into trance. And I saw a bed when I saw it. When the Lord asked me, He said, What makes her a woman? I'll put it all when she was in the womb of her mom before she came on her. So what she had, what they had on her is not mine, and I'm not in it. First, they have to pierce. Secondly, you prefer now to change the style of your head. That's the first thing. Ungratefulness. Check that. If you don't believe, that's the truth. I mean, the, the, the simple, that simple example should have taken you to sins. To understand it. You can pray over it. I can't say don't pray. Pray over it to ask God. You know what would be painful for you to know this? And not believing, not obeying it, and at the end of the day, that's what will take you to hell. Can you imagine? After doing all that you have done, because of the hearing, you find yourself in hell. Glorify God in your body. You have much women. That's why I will take my time on women. The boys have decided not to come today. This is their on their own. That's the problem. For the word of God, we can't run after someone. The only running that we can do is to be after you every day. Brother Kambo, Brother Kambo. That's why I'll do it till I die. It's my duty. When you don't want to come, I'll not go and force you and come and sit down and listen. No. They are on their own. One day, one day, they'll understand. But I pray that it, it, it shouldn't be late. The women here, is it normal for a woman standing that eyes look here and see behind? Is that normal? A woman, as you are walking, you come and eyes pierce here and you can see up behind. Is that normal? See how Rane do her face. 
But you have some friend when they wear their trousers, you can see behind. You see that? This is the simple thing that has teach you that trousers is, has never been for a woman. No, a nigga. Glorify God in your life. Your life and your body does not belong to you. You must glorify God in it. God say your body is my temple. You cover it. You decide to expose your body. Maybe it's a mystery. I would like to understand. But thank God. As I'm serving the Lord. I come to understand it. That's why a woman can never be sitting down. And opening the leg like that. She always close it. It's a teaching. If that one is not sufficient, and you have to go and wear me that small thing like that, oh, and you are working now in the community. How do they call the prostitute here in Nigeria? There's a name. Eh? Obozo. Obozo. Eh? Let me tell you the truth. That's just the life of Obozo. That's all. Because the thing you have to hide is outside. One day, a pastor I was with was preaching, and I was standing like my brother was coming. Say, Timothy, if God won't let everybody to see you, would have put it here. But then I was a fornicator. The pastor knew. Timothy, you shouldn't bring it out everywhere. If God wanted for everybody to see, God would have put it here. What? God know why he hide it here. So keep it, keep it. You hear what I mean? You understand it? This is a work of a boy to the thing your husband has to see and be glad with it. Everybody is seeing it. I was talking to a sister one day. You know, our pastor gave a name, Spaghetti Top. Who knows what is Spaghetti Top? Who knows the Spaghetti Top? You know it. The cigarette is small like that. I was making video call and I saw it. I sat this out off your camera. Off your camera. <laughs> but I'm in no honor at home. But my eyes can see it. If you are home, you alone, then off your camera. Next time, if you are done that, don't open your camera for me to see it. I don't want to see it anymore. Like that. Close it. <laughs> there was some guys there who will be there. Hey, hello. We contemplating the thing. Spaghetti top, if you wear it and you feel hot, be in your room, not outside. Your press this side, wow, we shouldn't see it. This is Obojo. Liberia, we say Ashawo. In La Côte d'Ivoire, we say Ganju. Ghana is it? The same thing, Ashawo. Ashawo. Liberia, Obojo, I'll add one thing. I will go to Kenya, I will learn how to call them there. Hallelujah. See, you can laugh, but in this laugh, learn the truth. Learn me to, eh, hey, I'm at home. Hey, I have to relax. And that's how. One day I asked to, to say I'm doing washing, that's why. I said, okay, if Jesus comes, can you tell him that I'm doing washing? Wait. Eh? And she said, no. That's the truth. Hallelujah. I told you last time that our obedience is just profitable to us. It doesn't do anything to God. If it's God, if you don't, if you want to disobey, be a good rebel. It's on your account. What you are doing is, the Bible says, God says, is to men like you. That's why we are standing here. We are always shouting. Is it God who is shouting to you? It's we. Because we know something. That's why we are shouting. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I know the time, please? So that I should not go beyond. Eight. Eleven. Hallelujah. Amen. Our body belongs to God. Somebody have a question, something to say again? You are saying a lot of things here. You must ask questions. 
as you are here. Don't keep it and go and live astray or walk astray. Ask questions. Joyce, have a question? You have something to say? Give it, you take okay, the microphone. Uh -huh. Sorry. Isn't that a sin? Which clothes? There is a sense Speaking of mouth. They didn't pierce our ears. Yes. And when our parents gave birth to us, they both clothes on us. So, isn't that a sin? How can it be a sin? You should have been naked. Yeah, because God didn't uh, brought us with all our clothes. Okay. So, you hear what he said? But Mama Joyce, you hear that? Eh? That's a question. Hallelujah. When a baby is born, normally the baby comes on the air, is born naked. Why do the, the parent cover the baby? Is it not a sin? No. Can't be a sin. Can't be a sin. You know why? You must be clothed. Otherwise, you die some hours to come. That's not a sin. Hear me. I know why you are saying it. Most of the people when you are talking about dressing godly, they are telling us that even the fabric we are using, is it God who created it? It's not men. But hear me, what men have created in the, in the Garden of Eden, that's Adam and Eve. When they fall short of the glory of God, they sin and disobey to God. The Bible says that they want them to get themselves some leaves to cover themselves. But can you tell me how long will a leaf of, of, of tree last on you? And the Bible says that God looked at them with a skin of an animal. Hallelujah. God clothed them. The cloth is the, the, the dress that you wear is to cover your, your nakedness. And as a baby, you need to be, how do you call it, where to show? You have to be home, warm. You have to be warm. That, that's why you wear this thing, you know? Even the, 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 the texture, how do you call it, the texture de la ville? The texture. The texture, eh? C'est ça? Eh? You see how it's very smooth for a baby to feel comfortable? Yeah. Otherwise, the baby see something will happen to the baby. You will have what we call washoko. The skin will be dry. It's not a sin. Okay? If it's a sin, then we all have to remove our dress now. Then we'll throw them away. Hey, what will happen here? Nobody will say it. You see? Here is the sin. Removing the dress. That's the sin. Here I see the ear of a girl. That's the sin. It's a gratefulness. Some don't like their skin, they bleach. It's a sin. Last time, uh, Titi was asking me, what, what, what was the question the, these thing people put here? How do you call it? Eh? Uncle, uncle Chin. That, eh, is it a sin? The Uncle Chin, we can put some are putting, they are singing in the choir, and eh, you know, they can sing where well. you can see anointing flowing. It's not anointing, that's the marine spirit. Hear me, among the animals that we know, it's a cow and a fowl that we die here. Are you a fowl or a cow? Am I lying? Am I lying? Human beings don't need it. And this has a meaning. The homosexual, it has a meaning. Prostitution, it has a meaning. Are you a abojo or obojo? Obojo to wear this. You are not an Obojo. You are the daughter of Zion. Say amen. amen. Say I, I am a daughter of Zion. I am a daughter of Zion. I am not Obojo. So I'll cover myself. Amen. Somebody else have something to say? A question? Yes. Raniel. Amen. 
Uh, speak when well the microphone like that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, hello. The say it again. People, say it again. The they you were your boyfriend. Okay. The people know him. The people know you. The two of you are planning to get married, but you are not married. Is a sin? It's a big sin. Just a question. To say, sell something here, isn't it? Eh? You are selling certain things here. Or you don't sell? I'm selling. Uh -huh. So there are price on your... Uh, items, isn't it? The one I like now, how much is it? Ten dollars. Okay. If I come and I take it without giving you the ten dollars and I want, how will you call me? Row. Isn't it? There is a price on it before I must taste, unless you give it to me. But for marriage, it's not like that. Too. You know, marriage, unless the parents say, boy, our daughter, with your daughter, is the agreement that's the marriage. Not what you are paying and giving is the agreement of the two families. So if you are living with a boyfriend, not tarry, not tarry, that means the agreement that the two family must to sat down and talk about the issue is sin. Even though Sleep in the room of your father and your mother is a sin. That's fornication. And let me tell you, the man doesn't come pay your diary and you are there in the room with him. What are you doing? Even tomato in the market have a price. What about you? Are you priceless? Eh? The, the tooth stick. Uh, this is how you call it. Eh? Tooth, tooth pick. We don't buy it. We buy it. Toothpick. We buy it. Why not you, human being? Me, I remember when we were young, uh, in the village, because I grew in the village before, when a woman gives birth and is a girl, the way we can dance, because we say she's bringing wealth in the family. Like a woman was like a girl. We can dance. That day, eh? Oh, the whole village can be because it's a girl. I know my people of Grand Basa, they can know this. They are they have a way of doing it. Uh -huh. This is my people here. It's a sin. Without that region, it's a sin, sister. Even though, whether you are a, I said it, whether you are a young lady or an old lady, it's a sin. You have another question. Come on. You too. Okay. Yes, for saying you before the person but you're not married. And not paying your salary. But when you are pregnant for a person and for the person for us in our tradition, the person gave money for you. So after a person gave that money and you move to the person was is it a sin? Okay. You must have people of your tribe. To explain to us how things work there when it comes to marriage. As, as for me, when the man has not paid your dowry and you got pregnant, that's a shame for your family. That's why they are pay, they are telling you to pay this. It's not your dowry. Am I wrong? It's a shame. It's just to wipe the shame. They have a wealth, you know, cover it. That's not married. And if you follow him there, that's a big shame and you're twice. You are pregnant and you left twice. Shame. It's a sin. You can't be pregnant without a diary. It's not possible. How? And if you are pregnant, that's a sin. Without that, it's a sin. That's what we call fornication before the Lord. And if you come before me with your man, you know what I'll do? Yeah, like they, like they will be odd. Pastor will do meeting on me. I will separate you before everything. The woman has to go on the side, the man will inside. You have to check your, your, your Christian life if you become born again. Because there are plenty of people living in this condition and they claim marriage as a right. 
That's why still the sin of fornication is speaking against them, even though they are married. They don't repent and claim marriage as a right because I've been living with him. I, I give children to him. We have spent like 10 years together, so it's, it's my right to marry him. You lie. If you come and meet me with that, even though you people have children, the man should not see your nakedness anymore. Before he come and pay the diary. And it's not that he has to rush and come and pay diary. You must marry if you are born again. If you are my church member, pray. I must check your life if you are really born again. When you are really born again, you yourself you know if yes or no you marry him. You know why there's no improvement in Liberia? Because of fornication. The whole Liberia because of fornication. And I told you that fornication does not end or stop only on sexual intercourse. There are things around it. You see in the street, the ladies are naked. You the mommy here, what are you doing? Auntie Anna, Mama, Angel, the dance. Why? What are you doing? This in your community are naked. This thing bring case. You don't know. They can, there is no how, how, do you, how, how should I call it? There's no future for a fornicator. That's why you are here. You must tell them. You must make a group in the community. We don't want to see you naked here. It's a poison, pollution that shows that you are really born again. You can't keep quiet and part. Me as a man in town, when I met somebody naked, I said, This your destiny is short. Oh, it's short. I'll tell you. It's a seed. You know, nakedness is a seed of unspirited demons. That push men to masturbation. Nakedness alone. That's why Jesus said, if a man take a look on a woman and laughs after her, he has committed what? Fornication in his heart. We should protect our own. As they are promoting nakedness, we should promote also, how do you call it? Is it covering? Eh? As they are promoting nakedness, let us promote, promote covering of body, women. Check them in the community. You're here, you should tie it. Close this. We don't, we don't want to see it here. Go. You're straight your teeth down. You are quiet on it. And let wait though. It will spoil your own children. I'm telling you. Can you imagine one day your, your daughter will tell you, Mama, I don't want any shit. Whatever you do, she will not obey. The way your parents were hard on you before, without the gospel, now that you are the gospel, you must be more than hard. We were parents didn't know the gospel before, that's why we found ourselves in masturbation and fornication. And when it's like that, you don't do anyone, you are doing yourself. Anytime that I'm preaching, I'm telling people, I say, pray. If you are still virgin, pray. Don't lose it, please. You don't know what is it. You don't know, you know the struggle and it. Standing here without being married, knowing already fornication. There are ladies in town. You have to pray with the Lord of mercy. I plead the blood. I plead the blood because you have already, you have already tested it. It has become a daily battle. That's why I don't joke. Tuesday I went in Jamaica. I was talking to a sister. She just come closer and she wants to touch my knee. I said, don't touch me. I don't want it. Don't touch me. If you are talking to me, don't touch me. Why are you touching me? Am I your boyfriend? I just want to stand and sit in there. And Pastor, you know, I said, don't touch me. Why? 
Your mouth is not enough to speak. You have to put your finger. But if somebody will, what will he say? Oh, pastor, you exaggerate. Eh? This is a seed. I don't want it. Brother, you remember one day what I said? Don't touch me. Because twice, I didn't pay attention. She touched me such a way. I said, Ranel, don't touch me. Just speak to me. Don't touch me. This touching, touching, doing somewhere, I don't want it anymore. It has become a problem for me. I have to pray every day, watch over my life. That's why you must check it. Hallelujah. Amen. Because our body is not our, ours. You must glorify God in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Fornication is a problem of Liberia. Nakedness everywhere. This small, small, small boys said that they are well in the community. You must put, how do you call it, a checkpoint here. It's your right. Let me tell you, it's your right. We have our children here. Don't pass here with this. We don't want to see it. Shout. If you can't stop them when they are saying, shout. They must know that you don't like and God doesn't like it. That's why they are shouting. If the president wants to should come and arrest you. Why? He the president, we have been praying for him. So what is right is what we have to say. No body, no government. I'm not afraid. No government. How do you call that thing of the miss? If the miss, I want to know. Miss. When the lady have to put those under dress and walk. Yeah. Eh? That's why I don't I, I'm dealing with government with it. That's why I preach against president. This thing. You can vote law to accept this, and you can't accept the gospel to be spread. God will punish you. The whole nation has been polluted by that through television, posters in town, nakedness everywhere. What is preaching? What is going on? That's why there is no improvement, and you know the word love is home. That's why those who are doing it, you can see that they are, they are, they are like fine in it. You, you are suffering because you are not from the world. But you want to stay so they will, they will, they will uh, uh, entice you with those fake words. By the time you realize, you find yourself in hell. But they are chopping the good thing of it. I remember one day, <laughs> I'm doing like my father today, one day, I went to a village. I was preaching all to Nabijan. I travel to another town. One that I'm alone there, my colleague pastors are not there, I want to fornicate. There was a beautiful lady. I saw her. I tried all. Oh, nothing succeed. But the one I get to know. I don't even watch her face. Oh. The good thing of it now, the devil attacks me with it, but he didn't give it to me. It's the only one that I got. And later on, people were laughing at me in the village. You come and sleep with the turtle. It's a time I've been on you. Uh, taught you. Tortoise. Eh? Uh -huh. This is the name they gave to the lady in the village. Instead of having the so-called queen there, is the turtle that I got. Because I want to fornicate. You see? The church is those who are claiming here in Liberia. We are preaching. We are the fathers of the land. We are the fathers of the country. They can't stand the television say this thing. Government cancel it. Thank God I'm in, I'm in Liberia. You have been all to my government there. I'm not afraid because since I'm ready to be arrested, I'm ready. That's why I come a, a quick meeting in my family. There are certain things I have to deal with. If you don't want, don't send me your money. I've never asked your money. I'll send them the truth. This is your wife separate. This life is not good. Go away. I'm not people, I don't want to be part of their sin. I can't go back quickly, then I come for a quick meeting. WhatsApp conference video call. I want to see everybody to talk to you as I'm watching your face. How can you be a homosexual in this my house? Then I'm not a son of this house. So you people have been caught talking. 
imitating, nobody would have seen that she's misbehaving. She's been sending you people money. Nobody thought that, that homosexual is a sin against God. Oh! Church, if you know the price that I've been paid, not to be for life. If you keep quiet on sin, you are part of it. You are a partaker. You know that? If you keep quiet on what is not right, and you don't speak on it, you don't throw attention on people, you are part of it. At the end of the day, you will be judged. People must know your position. Let them know that this house, in this house, we don't see nakedness yet. Shout! Can you see? We be standing here preaching, the whole community can hear, and we come, you people are naked. Well, shame on you. Shame. No. No. You are, you are making the gospel suffering. You are killing the work of God. You know, when I was like that, I understood it, that's why I can preach. People know that I was born again. And I find myself in, in, in club, drinking. And people ask me, well, you know the pastor. What did I do by that action? I put disgrace on pastors. And as a pastor, I have a girlfriend. Is it when I show you a, a picture? And anytime I went to preach to preach, when I come back, she said, Oh, false pastor. I'm not sleeping with you now. Stop calling me false pastor. I don't like it. She said, You are a false pastor. I said, well, I say, You have a girlfriend. I'm your girlfriend. You see that? And one day I told her, I said, One day I'll become a good pastor. Stop. I'll become a good pastor. She thought that it was a joke. A day around six, I called her. She was sitting here under the tree where everything started. And I told her, I said, from today, I'm a good pastor. I will. I don't want you anymore. From today, I'm a good pastor. And she went. Later on, she lived a life anyway, depending on how she want. I called her, I said, you are not doing me. When I was with you, you were a virgin, I kept it for you. Now you spray it everywhere. See, you spray your own life, not me. Some days ago, I preach you away again. Say, you must change, otherwise hell will swallow you. You can't have the name of God on you, and you the same person, per person, putting disgrace on the name of God. By your character and your attitude. That's disobedient. May the Lord have mercy on us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now that you hear the word of God, I'll bring it on you. You check your life. How much have you disgraced the name of the Lord that has been called upon you? Think about that. How much have you disobeyed to the Lord by your ungratefulness? Hallelujah. Amen. May God bless us. Amen. Can we pray? Please, please what is the time? 8.35. It was a five minutes to end. Oh, Jesus. What will you do? We just have to pray. And ask the Lord to have mercy on us. Let's pray. You know your life. You know where you disobeyed God. You know where you have been ungrateful. Pray and ask God to forgive you. This God will never get tired of forgiving. Never. Never. He's still forgiving. He will forgive you. God will have mercy on you. God will have mercy on you. One of the seven, one of the prophets of old said, Who is that God who can forgive our sin? He threw them into the sea of forgotenness. 
Pray, ask God to have mercy on you. Pray, ask God to have mercy on you. Pray, ask God to have mercy. Lord Je veux compter sur ta grâce. Je veux contempler tes œuvres. Confrère à mon âme que tu es un chagrin. Bébé, élevé de ton trône. Mes yeux sont fixés sur toi. Là où mes Là où mes forces ne peuvent Seigneur, toi tu peux. Why don't we to pray? Ask the Lord to give you most and more grace to stand and to honor Him, to glorify Him in your life, in your body that belongs to Him. Pray and ask the Lord to give you more grace, more grace, more grace. Because the Bible says, "Not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit." Pray and ask God to give you the, the grace of the standard and to glorify Him in every part of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Touch us, O oh Lord. Touch us, O oh Lord. Give to your children, Lord, more strength to stand for truth in the name of Jesus. Give them your grace, O oh Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This prayer continue meditate on the note that you took. Read the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to explain to you again. Hallelujah. To take you deeper okay. into the Word. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are not deep in the Word, may the Lord bless you. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay. You do me. Uh, you give me. You for me, Johnny. Do me a People of God, we thank you to be online with us to follow the service to the end. Uh, this is some of the challenges that we are facing here. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy, but the Lord has been good to us. It's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy because we have to buy uh, a fuel into the generator. We don't have much, so we buy only one gallon. So the fuel finish on us. The fuel finish on us. That is why we are in the darkness now. But we bless God. We bless God. So God bless you. Keep your support coming. Keep your support coming for Liberia. Liberia, keep your support coming. God bless you all. God bless you all. Sister Gloria, God bless you. Gifty Nunana, God bless you. Sister Loazi, God bless you. All the people that are online, God bless you all. God bless you all. Amanda Nkube, God bless you. Oh, God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Shalom. Peace.